what are we going to do today and tomorrow with all of this information, with all this knowledge? First thing we're going to do is we'll complete the orientation. And I can assure you, we are so close to being done with that. So all right, cross one off the list. And then we're going to get in the zone, and we're going to review the whole job. And first, we'll conduct a whole job brainstorming, right? We'll get those 55 to 65 initial ideas, what we would see you do on the job, what you think of when you do your work. And we'll capture that. And we'll also develop kind of a quick and dirty org chart. So we'll put you in the center of the universe, right where you belong. And then we will take a look at who you report you know, up to, right, about two levels above you, who, you, who manages you. And then if you have any support or subordinates or direct reports, we'll capture that information as well. And then importantly, we're going to take a look at your internal and external stakeholders, individuals or organizations or departments that you interact with to perform your jobs, okay? So we'll grab that information because it is often helpful when um, identifying task statements especially. Sometimes it's like, oh, you know, I can't think of another task statement, but then if you look at the org chart, you'll see, oh, right, we work with these regulatory organizations maybe. So let's grab some information about that and put it on the wall. Once we get that all wrapped up, we'll go back to the brainstorm chart and we will use that to flush out the six to 12 duty statements that are associated with your work, okay? And once we get those duties laid out, down the wall here in the blue cards, we will one by one brainstorm each of those duties until we run out of ideas, for one by one. So we'll do, you know, whichever, the first duty, and we'll brainstorm it, brainstorm it, brainstorm it. We'll get all flip charted out. And then we will use our recipe for task statements to develop those uh, task statements that will go on the wall, right? And then once we wrap that one up, we'll make sure it's in a nice order that you know, makes logical sense. And we'll move on to the next duty and do the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. Once we get the initial draft of the chart wrapped up, we'll turn our attention over to the list of enablers. And you'll be chomping at the bit by then to lay this stuff out, because you'll have talked about knowledge and skills and tasks, or knowledge and skills and tools and equipment. And we'll grab, and we'll have so many acronyms you know, it'll be crazy, I'm sure. So we'll grab those enablers. We'll, we'll lay them all out on the wall over there. And then once that's done, we'll turn our attention back to the chart and do our final review and refinement. So we'll look at each duty statement and its associated tasks and make sure that they are accurate, they're cleared, nothing's missing. We don't need to add or edit or tweak them at all. And that we'll make sure that they're in an order that is an, a logical workflow if necessary, okay? And then we'll finalize the sequence of the duties, A through whatever it winds up being um, for the chart. In the case of Caterpillar, they arrange their duty statements, A through H, in the order of importance to their work. Right? They decided that maintaining the customer satisfaction is the most crucial part of their work because without the customer, none of this other stuff really happens, right? So you may have a different way of organizing or prioritizing or sequencing. We'll figure it out. We'll get them sequenced, A through whatever. And then we'll be done. We'll high five each other, exchange contact information, um, definitely take some photos, and stand back in awe of the work you've done. Because I don't know about you, but I feel like every day I am just swimming as fast as I can to keep my head above water at work. So I don't really get a chance to sit back and look at kind of the global like work that I do and, and then kind of see the gestalt of how it all comes together in those task statements as well. So it's, it's, really, it's really something to see the work on the, on the wall by the end of day two. I have never had a DACOM panel at the end of a DACOM workshop say, oh, every single time in the years I've been doing this, they are just floored by seeing it laid out in black and white. Wow, I didn't realize we do so much. You don't, you're so busy, you don't get a chance to really reflect on that. So it's pretty cool. So let me give you the agenda for today and tomorrow. You may have already received one of these by email. But uh, it's kind of a rough agenda because once we get started, it's sort of like, uh, you know, anything goes. We will take plenty of breaks between um, sections of our work. We'll have a fabulous lunch, continental breakfast in the morning. We will start at 8.30 at the latest um, today and tomorrow, maybe earlier tomorrow depending on how, how many duties we wind up laying out. And we will always um, try to end by 4.30 or 5 o'clock for sure. And I know with some flights that will be 
uh, very important. So, any questions? All right, the last piece are our ground rules. And since everybody here is, you know, a mature adult, except perhaps one of your facilitators, you uh, will all be happy to know that rank and seniority are left at the door. So there are folks who have been here for many years and some that have been, are relatively new to the position. Everyone here is equal. So all of you have wisdom to impart onto the panel and um, into the process. So we will be taking plenty of turns sharing that information. You have name tents in front of you, so there's no shrinking violets. We'll be doing a lot of round robins. Everyone will participate equally. Um, it's very helpful for me if we save technology for breaks. Um, I know it's hard to get away for two days from your work. I, I get that. So if you need to take a call, put out a fire, whatever it is, deal with a kid emergency, by all means, take the call. You can take a walk outside. That's totally fine. Again, we'll have plenty of breaks if you need to send emails or make phone calls. So um, that would that's great. But um, And if you have your phone, please turn the ringer on vibrate perhaps, because it is sort of distracting. I'm easily distracted. So it moves the process uh, along a little faster. And also, I know it's a lofty, ambitious goal, but if we can try to have one person speaking at a time, that would be great. Because um, we have a lot of wisdom and expertise in this room, and people get really excited about you know sharing and conversing with, with their colleagues and their peers. Um, and as the facilitator, sometimes when those decisions, those discussions are going back and forth and I'm trying to like land the plane a little bit and get you know the task on the wall or whatever it may be, um, it's hard to kind of pull on certain threads when there's like six or five voices going on. So if we could try one at a time, that would be awesome. It would speed the process. No references. So maybe you have a training manual or your SOPs or your job description with you. Put it away. We don't need it. It's not relevant to our work today because the only reference that matters is what you have up here, is your experience, your knowledge of what you do on the job. That's it. Um, but also use each other as references. So there will be times when maybe Andrew's like, oh, I'm tapped out of ideas. You know, I, 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 I got nothing else to offer during a brainstorm. And then Ginny will say something and Andrew will be like, oh my gosh, that's right. You know, and it just unlocked this whole new area of thought um, for him. So that happens a lot during brainstorming. So p please hitchhike on each other's ideas. We need to make sure we consider every task statement we develop very carefully and come to consensus on it before it goes on the wall um, because we want to make sure that we're putting together the best chart throughout the entire process. So the end of day two, that review and refinement goes much more smoothly. We don't want to kind of be haphazard about our process. Observers, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate your presence, and um, we're happy you are here to observe. We'll have plenty of opportunities between activities to chat with you, of course. And um, be respectful to one another. This has not been a problem, uh, especially with this organization. Everybody is really kind of kumbaya. I love it. So, um, you know, just be respectful to one another. You have a lot of expertise. You were all selected because you are the best at your job, so kudos to you. And most importantly, enjoy the process. Look at how happy these folks are. They're from Calgary. Look at that. It's not just because they're Canadians. They're happy because they are done with their Dakin process. That was a huge chart that we put together with them, too. There's our HR managers up in, up in Calgary. And they uh, were fabulous. And we'll take a really fun photo at the end when you're all done, because you'll feel like rock stars. I promise.